something we haven't really done before, but we've mentioned. We are going to talk about rereading our childhood favorite fantasies. Yeah, because we've done that now. Yes. Together. And discussed it mm -hmm. oh, a little bit. I think just on no, our... No, no, I mean, we... Oh, between us. We buddy read our childhood favorite fantasies yes. together. Uh -huh. um, I read hers for the first time and she read mine for the first time. Right. And so we're going to talk about it and just compare and see how we feel about it now uh -huh. as adults. Because we have feelings. We do. <laughs> okay. I'm Jessica. I'm Christina. And you're watching Game, Game of Tones. Okay. So I grew up with my mother always reading... The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. The Wheel of Time series. The Wheel of Time series. Thank you. I was trying to think of that. And she loved that series so much. And yeah. so um, once I was like, I don't know, seventh or early high school age, seventh grade-ish or something like that, I wanted to read them. And so I did. I've never finished the series because it's incredibly long and very... 14 books, I think? Yeah. And all of them are like no less than at least like seven, eight hundred pages. <laughs> I mean, Yeah. So, um, we decided to read that together last year yeah. with another one of our friends in real life. Mm -hmm. And then you grew up reading the Xanth series by yes. Pierce Anthony. Mm -hmm. The first one being A Spell for Chameleon. Yes. That I can remember my mom reading that when I was a small child mm -hmm. and looking at that the book cover and just being like fascinated with that. It's not a sphinx. It's called a, it's not a chimera. Um... Mm -hmm. Anyway, Bink looking up at it and having a conversation, and I was just totally captured by that image. Yeah. And in seventh grade, we, my mother and I, we read it together. We would take turns reading aloud. And I have continued on with that series. Have not finished it, because it is in the 40s now. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But they, it has a, a the, both books are different. They're, they're both fantasy, but they're very drastically different. Yes. And I wanted to say that my mother and I didn't read these out loud together, but I would remember while reading it, going and talking to my mother, like, oh, I can't believe this happened, like, I can't, and she's like, you just wait, and she was so into it, and so it was always, like, a very big bonding time for us, mm -hmm. when I would read and then come and talk to her about it. She even has, like, compendium books that go into, like, the world and, like, different things about it, and just very, Same, very much yeah. into it, and right. so it was really cool to talk to her about stuff, and she would kind of, like, help me follow along because there's a lot of characters in that story mm. and series. That's cool. And it was just, yeah, it was a big bonding moment for us. So we never read out loud to each other, yeah. but like I would constantly be going to her or she would be like, where are you at? You know, and talking about it. And that was really, really cool. And I think both of these series for us is what got us into fantasy. Hands down. I mean, I read Harry Potter. Yeah. I think I read the first book in like fifth grade. Mm -hmm. And that was always really cool, but, like, this was the first, like, epic fantasy. Also, Harry Potter, the conclusion didn't come out until we were, well, 17. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, I loved Harry Potter so much, but mm -hmm. my love for that grew as I grew up, mm -hmm. and when I became an older teenager, that's when, um, but it was these books that really got us there first. Yeah, and this is was, like, again, the first, like, epic fantasy, like, adult fantasy I'd ever read. Me too. And so I was like, I got this big, huge fantasy book and I really like it. And I was like, this is my thing. Yes. This is what I love. And to this day, those are some of my favorite books are those big, thick, epic fantasy books. So the Wheel of Time series, it, I have the world specifically, and yes. I haven't moved on in the series yet, <clears throat> but it is super... Uh, inspired by Lord of the Rings, uh -huh. and you can't help, I couldn't help but just compare every single little thing that happened to something that happened in the Lord of the Rings. And see, that's so funny because I never read Lord of the Rings until yeah. like last year or the year before, Yeah. and so I never drew those comparisons growing up. I'd never seen the movies, I'd never read the books, and it was, to me, it was like so creative, so unique, <laughs> and its own thing, and then rereading it with you, and you were like, Wow. And I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Um, and I've heard that uh, as you move on from the series, it becomes more of its own thing. Right. We would like to point out that The Eye of the World was published in 1990 and Lord of the Rings was published in 1954. Lord of the Rings was thing. the first of its kind. Yeah. You know? And so fantasy, after that, they really took a lot of inspiration from it. And which is cool. I mean, over time, it's changed, and we'll talk more about that later. Yeah, if we want to. Yeah. Um. But also, okay, let's talk about Xanth for a second. Okay. And Xanth is like its own 
thing. It's it's so funny, first of all. It's funny. It's full of puns. Yes. The magic system is like, what? Really cool. Really cool. Everything in Xanth either is magic or has magic. Yeah, including like the trees and the water and I mean like everything. Random weird stuff that yeah. you would never, like there's so many possibilities and variations mm -hmm. of things. It's and very you're cool. all I the really time like encountering that. new weird crap. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> However, Okay, yeah. Yes. So, right. when I was young, mm -hmm. I I knew that he was, Bink was objectifying women. Or, like, he liked women a lot, and so he would all the time be commenting on the way that they looked. And right. um, they the women were very, like, I imagine... Um, like video games to be where the women are like big breasted and like perfect Barbie dolls. Yeah. Um, and so when he would say any, but this time reading it, I really felt like he stepped a line. This book was published in 77. Yeah. So it was a different time. And he, he tried. Okay. Like he tried to make this in the story. He tried to, to say, make this point that just because someone looks a certain way mm -hmm. doesn't mean, just because someone is really beautiful doesn't mean that they are going to be really smart. Uh, and just because someone is really ugly doesn't mean that they're going to be dumb. Right. And just because someone looks like a hero doesn't mean that they are. Yeah, they could be evil inside or whatever. Right. And that was the point he was trying to make. But anytime he encountered a woman, he would say... Uh, like, compare her to all the other women that he's met in his life, and then, like, think about how smart they are and, and how, what, what their bodies make him yeah. feel inside, mm -hmm. and it was just, like, way too much. It, it was, yeah. Um, and there was one point in the story where he was, like, um, talking about this girl who was a really unattractive, and she, they were, like, in prison together, mm -hmm. and he says, or, or no, she said, I want um, a partition so that I could go to the bathroom in private. And he thinks in his mind, why? She's ugly. Like, why would I want to look at her when she's having a private moment? Mm -hmm. And if it was an attractive woman, she would say that she didn't want to be seen, but secretly she would want yeah. to look. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. And it was constant. I mean, there's one part also that, I mean, like, the first one that really stuck out to me was um, he's trying to escape a dragon, and there's a very attractive but yet dumb girl, and he's, like, getting aroused thinking of her while they're trying to escape this dragon, and I was like, oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. But it's, like... It's an, it's sprinkled in there enough to be very prevalent and obvious. Yes. But it's not like full on constant. Okay. But I and mean if it's you like take it's out there. all of that stuff. This book is it's a fun it's so a fun full of adventure story. Yeah. and um it got my imagination going as yeah. a child and I yeah, still I as an that. adult enjoyed it a lot. Yeah. Um, but I just was finding myself rolling my As eyes. an adult now, we can see these flaws in these books that as children or, you know, young adults, we just weren't as woke as we are now, <laughs> you know? Yeah, right. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, they def we can see that they have problems in, like, like, the eye of the world. I loved it. I thought it was, like, it's first of its kind. And then rereading it, I'm like, okay, well, this reminds me of Lord of the Rings. And, like, this reminds me of this other series. This reminds me of that. And, I mean, you can, you can definitely see that. Mm -hmm. Um, but I also don't necessarily have a problem with books drawing inspiration from other books. Sure. No. I mean, this one was quite similar in some respects, like, um, the Black Cloaked Riders. Which one? When? What? Um, the ones that they don't, their cloaks don't move in the wind. Oh, you're talking about in Eye of the World. Yes. Yes. And it's very similar to, um... The Black Riders in, in Lord of the Rings, right? right. So many. Um, so I mean, there's are very obvious things, but you know, I I feel that same way about music as well, and just different things. It's um, people draw inspiration from other people, and I think that's great, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and I think fantasy now. Oh yes, has taken a turn. Yeah, for sure. Oh, we were going to talk about the TV show. The Bechdel test? Yes. Okay, so the Bechdel test, if you don't know, and I'm not trying to be pretentious, I just want you to know. I asked her because I didn't know what it was. If either. you don't know. Yeah. Um, is um, a book or a TV show or whatever piece of media, if it has two women who have a name that are named and they talk to each other. 
So in the in Spell for Chameleon, I I can literally only think of two females that are named, and they do talk to each other at like the very, very end, end. like That's it. a sentence to each other. Yeah. So like, because when you said that, I was like, no, it doesn't. And I was like, oh, it's the very yeah, it end. Does. Yeah. And then yours, it does mm -hmm. because there's Egwin. What's her name? I say Egwin. Nynaeve. Oh, yes. And Moraine. Mm -hmm. they, those are the three main females, and they do talk to each other. Yeah, so I was I was thinking that book was male-centered because... It is, though. Um, Your main character is male. I mean, you do jump um, different perspectives. I don't know, did we do that in the first book, or does it do that later? You hear from different... Yeah, that's later. You follow on. different narrations later, mm -hmm. but for the most part, it is very male-centered. And Between three main male characters. The TV show is coming out, and they're centering mm -hmm. the story on Moraine, which I think is very interesting. Yeah, the TV show is going to be on Amazon, and my mom, of course, is sending me a bunch of stuff, and she's sending me a lot of the cast, and they have a very diverse cast. Yeah. Also, the... Out of the cast, the person with the most acting credits only has six acting credits. Mm -hmm. Most of them only yeah, have one. They're like I don't recognize a brand new most of them. cast of people, and I think I'm really excited for that. Too. I really like seeing like shows giving people an opportunity and things like that. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah. And like you said, I love Moraine's story. There's a prequel yes. that was written like after quite a few of the books have come out that follows Moraine and her story a little bit mm -hmm. and I, I really like that and so to kind of just keep this diversity and to follow females especially in a series that is it's male dominated at first but as the books go on it does get very female oriented as well and whitewashed but, like I can't think yeah. of in either series mm -hmm. is there anyone of color um there are some people from different Countries, I don't. They, I don't think they call them countries, but Later different on parts the of the land. Yeah, okay. that they are described as dark skinned and tattoos, nice. and like they uh, have um, gold chains and piercings and things like that. So they're like they, tribal or whatever. Well, and they're they're sea people, and so a lot of them sea walk around people. topless and things like that. <laughs> um, but I would like to say, if anybody's read the series Perrin Abera, I remember. He is going to be black in the TV show, and I remember in the book them always describing his curly hair, and so I was like, oh, I'm really glad that they went that direction with it because I feel like that can really help keep it diverse and keep, you know, them close to their character description in the books. Interesting. And I, I'm not sure if they describe him necessarily as black or dark skin in the book series. I can't remember. But I was thinking of him as a redhead. So, oh, really? Well, I think they say Matt is a little Rand is redheaded. Okay. The main the main one. He's That's where I'm getting that. Yeah. And then Matt is dark hair but a trickster. It's been a year since I read it. Yeah. And oh, I mean, that's the last time I read it in like years before that. So, yeah. um yeah, I I did look at the cast and like from my memory of like their descriptions of them, I'm excited about that. But Anyway, so that segues us into talking about how fantasy has changed yeah. since these books came out. Totes. Because these are very, even Lord of the Rings is very male-oriented. And a lot of the fantasies now, you can find... They, had, they added females in the movies <laughs> into Lord of the Rings. They're like, no, oh, we, we, we need more women. Like, Arwen barely had any um line she was barely a character um oh all but i think what's her name the girl who i am no i'm no man her oh man what's her name mm -hmm. i'm really bad at does it start with a g a o n yes uh she actually turned out to have um a great bit in the end like in the book and so i was very happy about that yeah i wasn't expecting because i mean Arwen was my favorite character and she was just barely in it yeah. in the book when I read it. So, uh, yeah. Well, and we, when we were taking, writing down a few notes to keep on track of what we wanted to talk about, you mentioned, um, Nevernight and how it's female oriented fantasy. Oh yes. And there's and like a half, cast of other females. Or more um, of that cast is female. Or I would even say Red Sister and Grey Sister by, mm. um, they're very similar books. Mark? La Not Mark Lawrence. Mark Lawrence? Yeah. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. I was thinking that's Handmaid's Tale, but it's right here. Joseph Lawrence. What does that say? Mark Lawrence. Good job. Even that is, like, so female and oriented. And, I mean, there's tons and tons out there. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, to kind of see, like, 
from Xanth, which literally has two females in like the whole book. And they talk to each other like one time at the very end yeah. with quite a few sexist things written into it. And now we have like Nevernight and all these other great examples of like strong female characters in fantasy. It makes me like really happy. I don't have a daughter, but yeah. it makes me happy for women that can grow up and read these fantasies. I mean, we grew up reading like the male oriented, but I never thought like, you know, you never felt left out. No, not necessarily, but I, I never I gave either, it much thought. Me neither, but I was, like, so used to... That was just a thing then. I didn't... Right. And so when you watch things now, just now, when you're like, oh, that person is a woman. Oh, that person is a woman, too. Like, people, they're like, women are putting them... Like, getting seen in, like, um, Jessica Jones or oh, whatever. Yeah. Or, um, like, the new Star Wars. I haven't seen that. But mm -hmm. people were just talking about how, like, just random people will be women. And that's not a thing that happened Well, before. I remember, I don't watch Doctor Who, but I remember when the Doctor was, they came out and said the Doctor was going to be a woman this season. Yeah. And people, women were like, yes, that's great, uh -huh. you know. I don't watch the show at all. I've never seen it. So I don't know, like, the context or anything. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I mean, you see all these things coming out. And I just think, like, what a great example that we are going to give these future children, future adults, you know what I mean? Um, and to, to show, like, it's just come a long way. Because if you think about it, 1954, when Lord of the Rings was written, that wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Really wasn't. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think we've, we are com coming a long way as a country. I'm not trying to turn this into po political, but, I mean, it's just I'm very gonna, nice to see I women. I want to make a statement about that, too, okay. and things that I've been feeling. Because um, I don't always love remakes mm -hmm. okay and so i think when um you just remake something that was really popular and then give it a female cast that doesn't always work yeah um but i think it's a step in the right direction mm -hmm. like the ghostbusters movie it was fun but i didn't like it wasn't amazing like the freshness of when it first came out and right. how creative and whatever that was um same thing with um jumanji jumanji just came out um they didn't like remake it all female right um but like it was really fun but it wasn't like the original and yeah. so i think just do, remaking something and making it all female doesn't really always work but like i said it's a step in the right direction and yeah. i think when i think the females are starting to get their own stories now not just remakes mm -hmm. and i think that's where we're gonna shine and that's where things are to gonna get happen. those original storylines with female characters yeah not... like just not just a remake. Right. Not to be like, we're going to remake it all women because women! Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. I understand. Uh, so, the big question is, are we going to continue with these series? I really want to know if you want to continue on with Xanth because... Okay. Well, here's the thing. So, we talked about with our friend Erin in real life, read it with us. And Erin had also read it when she was younger. Yeah. And so, she kind of felt the same way as you did. She really enjoyed it. And yeah. I was like... But because of nostalgia. Right. And right. Aaron suggested, because he's still continuing oh, yeah. with the series to this day. Right. The 40th or something, whatever book it is, comes out this November. Uh, Aaron suggested us to read this the newest recent. one that's going to yeah. come out and see how his writing has changed over the years. Uh -huh. And I would love to do that. Cool. I don't know if I necessarily want to read... All like of them start are, from but, the beginning, but I know they're not linear. I know like right. Aaron you can just said pick you can them pick up them up whenever. Yeah, because yeah. they don't necessarily follow the same people. Maybe or the, the same first story line. few do. Right, mm -hmm. and so I, I like maybe down the road if I'm feeling like oh yeah, I wouldn't mind to do that. Yeah. But like I would love to read his most recent one yeah. just to see his writing style that changes. And maybe has he <laughs> come a little more ways with women? You know right. what I mean? Yes. Uh, I would love, love, love to do that. Cool, me too. For sure. Yeah. As far as the Eye of the World yeah. or the Wheel of Time series, how do you feel about that? Interesting. So, um, yes, I would continue. I don't think I want to continue on my own, however. Mm -hmm. Like, if I do that, I would, I'd would. i like to do it with you so yeah. that we could talk about it. Um, I don't even remember how that book ended. <laughs> <laughs> See, and that's, that's my biggest problem with the Wheel of Time series is yes. they are... All of them are linear. Yeah. All of them. Right. And there's so much. It's not like, it can be a little info dumpy at times, but there's a lot of characters. There's a lot of like, 
legends and magic systems and explaining things and so it can be a lot to follow along and he doesn't necessarily like go back to re-explain things to kind of like refresh in your memory mm -hmm. so to speak mm -hmm. and so I, I have a really hard time I've only made it to like book number six or something like that because I just I get so burnt out I cannot I'm not the type of reader that can just read big tomes back to back to back I just can't um so I've never never done it um so I, I wouldn't necessarily be against read re, like continuing on and reading yeah but um I would definitely have to look up like an in-depth I would too review but there is a website that is devoted purely to the Wheel of Time series that lists oh man like how to pronounce their names yes, and fan right. art and all about the characters and mm -hmm. they the will break really it down like per chapter of what happened mm -hmm. and but some of that can be spoilery as far as like Oh, if yes, you click yeah, on a character, mm -hmm. you know? Right. So, um... Uh, and I do want to say, I said the first few are linear for Xanth, mm -hmm. but it's technically, like, they can be companions. Because yeah. even if they follow the same character, it's its own story, like, with its own yeah. story arc. And see, Xanth was kind of nice because it's like, it's almost like a light-hearted fantasy. Super. It's not like an epic fantasy. Yeah. You know, where you have all this information it's you need to It's not meant to be taken seriously. Right. And so I don't worry about, like, even a year from now, yeah. if we picked up the second book, I'd be like, I'm good. Mm -hmm. You know, I can just yeah. jump into it. Where with yours, I feel like we need to <laughs> read it for everything goes out Yeah, I feel like there's, like, a time frame that you have to retain this information or you need to go back and, like, do some in-depth researching before right. you continue on. So they're very different. Yes. And it's, um, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think we did it. Yeah. So this was a good conversation. This is this. us talking about, you know, well, you've watched it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you enjoyed us talking about rereading some childhood fantasy books that got us into fantasy. Yeah. And, you know, what are what's a fantasy series or book that got you into fantasy? Oh, I that's a great to... question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And have you guys reread it? And how do you feel about it now as adults? Yeah. Because, I mean, we, we definitely have different feelings about them. Also, if you've read um, either, either the Xanth series or yeah. The Wheel of Time, we'd love to hear your thoughts on yeah, those as well. Yeah, for sure. And what you thought about our discussion, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, when you play the game of Tom's, you read or you die. Come be our friends. Social media links in the description below. And we hope you're reading a great book. Bye. Bye.